Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and it looks like eight spoilers, including two very significant ones, have come out still today, so it's time for Monday's part two. Which is actually part three of the spoilers, I should say, because uh, the three Chandras were already spoiled. Or spoiled, I should say, not spoilered. So first up, we've got an absolutely crazy card, Infuriate. How this is common, how this was even approved, I don't know, because it's instant speed, one red, target creature gets plus three, plus two, until end of turn. Well, I mean, Titanic Growth, one of the most famous uh, green boost cards in the history of the game, is a two-cost green instant that gives plus four, plus four. So, per unit of mana, this is one of the most powerful boost spells in the history of the game. In recent memory, we did have Built to Smash, but remember, it's target attacking creature, so you could not use this uh, to boost a blocker and kill something in combat. Also, we had uh, the Nicolas Cage card, aka Borrowed Hostility. That was in Eldritch Moon, and it was plus three plus O oh for one. Uh, was instant speed, though. Then I had the old uh, plus three option for first strike as well. Not bad. And then there's the card you're probably already thinking of, which is Brute Force, which is uh, a, a pretty popular modern card, I would say. It was actually in MM2. So that's just straight up plus three plus three. So this is one point away from that and in standard. Holy crap. So will people play this? Well, if you look at Titan Strength from Origins, also a very recent card, it was a plus three, plus one, and then a Scry one. Uh, yeah, people played the heck out of that. It was actually in one of my winningest decks of all time. And since this is going to be one of the best cards in red in uh, Draft and the pre-release, I don't know why they put it at common. That, that seems like a mistake, to be honestly. But hey, if you see it, Draft it. Next up, oh yes, Ley Lines are back, Ley Line of Sanctity. So, Ley Line of Sanctity was printed in M11 as part of like a new cycle of Ley Lines. Uh, the last time they were printed before that was Guild Pact. And all of the Ley Lines that exist right now in the game are Ley Line of Anticipation, Life Force, Lightning, Punishment, Sanctity, Singularity, uh, The Meek, The Void, and Vitality. So this is a reprint, so we're going to see the rest, right? Apparently not, because the other ley line that just got spoiled today is Leyline of Combustion, which is a brand new card. So this cycle, if you could even call it that at this point, is going to be, I guess, a mix of reprints and brand new ley lines, which, I mean, nothing wrong with that, it's just weird. So this first one, it's totally wild. There's, oh, what, maybe three cards that do something like this? I think one was Serum Powder. So uh, let's just jump right to, if Leyline of Sanctity is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. So you just... Show it, drop it into play, and uh, you have hexproof. And uh, otherwise, if it's not in your opening hand, you can just hard cast it for four, which is, you know, pretty reasonable for that effect. I mean, it's a little high, it's double white, it's kind of weird, but it's not bad. I mean, Journey into Nyx saw the amazing rare card, Aegis of the Gods, for two that would grant you hexproof, but it was a 2-1 human soldier, so eh, kind of easy to destroy considering he doesn't have hexproof, but it was half the cost. But uh, the arguably more popular card is Witchbane Orb. Now, this is an artifact, but you can throw it into any deck, any color because of the four colorless. So, same cost, um, it destroys all curses attached to you, who cares, and then you have X-Proof. I've heard of and seen more people play that than Leyland of Sanctity, but the automatic uh, playing thing is great, except in Commander where it's never going to be in your opening hand. I really think that this encourages cheating, card manipulation, and... Four is a little too high for what it does. Who knows if their deck's even going to target you, so then should you really main board it or should you sideboard it? I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a powerful effect, but I have entire decks that never target the opponent ever. So it's unreliable, and then on top of it, it's unreliable. Now that said, somebody must think it's good or it's good in a specific deck because damn, this thing is about 20 to 25 bucks depending upon where you buy it. Um, I'm already seeing a value estimate of this being $9 to $10 from the new set. I think it'll be lower. So, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see Ley Lines back, that's for sure. And then uh, the two Ley Lines that are red are supposed to be Ley Line of Lightning and Ley Line of Punishment. So the M11 cycle would be Punishment. Uh, so if they were going to stick with like a set locked cycle, this is the one they would have went with. But I guess they thought players can't gain life and damage can't be prevented would be a little too messed up for standard right now, and I couldn't agree more. White's mechanic in M20 is basically weaponized life gain. 
you can't just print Ley Line of Punishment. And that goes like triple for the color red right now because they already have Tybalt, uh, the Planeswalker, where his passive says uh, opponents can't gain life. And then also they've already banned Ferocidon, the dinosaur that said you can't gain any life. That's currently banned in Standard right now. So yeah, shocker, they didn't print Punishment. Of course they didn't. I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. Don't print that. So the other red one is from Guild Pact, and uh, still four cost double red, and it says whenever you play a spell, you may pay one. If you do, it deals one damage to target player. I feel like that mixed with is it would be a little much. It's not crazy, it's just it's a little much. Like, you got Chandra out there, you're going to start spamming a bunch of one cost crap and just win the game. I mean, it's still four, though, and it's probably not going to be in your opening hand. There's, I think, a 42% chance of that happening or something like that. And, like, if it's the first card you draw on the first turn, wow, what a waste of a card. So what they did go with was Ley Line of Combustion. So, uh, you know, same thing if it's in your opening hand, slap it into play. And uh, whenever you and or at least one permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability and opponent controls, Ley Line of Combustion deals two damage to that player. That's arguably worse than Ley Line of Lightning. I mean, you are a permanent you control. So basically anything ever... I mean, it, spell or ability. So Planeswalker, you know, tap ability on a card. I mean, anything, and then they take two. That's just, it's stupid, it's annoying, and it's borderline overpowered. And then once again, since it's a ley line, uh, if it goes into play automatically for free, oh my gosh, it's overpowered as all hell. And then if you pick it up late game, it's barely worth the four mana. I mean, for four mana, just deal four damage to them right now with anything. Do you really think that late into the game, you're going to have this deal more than four damage to the opponent? Maybe it's, I mean, it's possible. So I hate this and I can't wait to see what the other ones are. I'm sure the blue one's going to be degenerate as hell. So the only thing left to say about Ley Lines is Outlaw Star was the best anime ever. Fight me, bitch. Next up, we've got Aether Gust. It's actually Aether Gust, but they changed the character because um, stupid websites whined about how it doesn't work with a Greek character. So what I should say is that's meant to say Aether Gust, but what they wrote is Aether Gust. So I'm going to say it Aether Gust. So anyway, it's a two-cost blue instant, and it makes your ox go flying off into space. Oh, also, choose target spell or permanent that's red or green. Its owner puts it on the top or bottom of their library. That is good, but only if they're playing red or green. Which means this is the definition of unreliable. This card might literally do nothing. And I, I doubt people would even put it in their sideboard, to be perfectly honest. I mean, this is one of the better color-locked cards, but... They said they were done printing color-specific cards. They said that. They said they're not doing it anymore. They don't want, oh, absolute random luck, zero skill, who did you sit down to play against and what are they playing? Like, they don't want that to be a factor in Magic anymore. So they said they were done printing cards and effects that are specific to a narrow, like, color-based lockout i guess and then here we have this whatever so assuming this is a full cycle they've basically wasted five spots but it's in the uncommon slot so whatever just more typical lies from wizards and printing stupid useless cards that nobody wants what else is new next up we've got risen reef and you're still even though it's attacking your beach not allowed to damage it by federal law that's a protected reef damn it so it's a one one for three uh elemental because of course and whatever Risen Reef or another elemental enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield tapped. If you don't put the card onto the battlefield, put it into your hand. Well, that's a neat little bonus for like old school landfall decks. I mean, I think this would be pretty cool. Every deck wants to get lands out of the way. And I mean, whether you need to ramp or not, it gets the land out of the way. It's pretty damn weak as far as elementals go, but there's a lot of passive boosts for them, but still... Even if you plus two, plus two it, you'd be back up to what it should have been in the first place if it was a vanilla creature. So, I don't know. I don't know. The utility of, oh, a couple extra lands and move some cards out of the way. You might as well just do like a passive scry card like Search for Canta. It's one cheaper. By the way, the flavor text is, no, not washed ashore. It walked ashore. I love that. And next up, we got ourselves a big old French elephant. Uh, it's Chantevier Loxodon. Or something like that. I've been told I speak French with a Spanish accent. Probably because I speak Spanish. By the way, last time I just straight face, tongue in cheek, did an entire video in French poorly to like kind of parody the fact that they keep releasing foreign cards and nobody can read them and what's the point and people are consistently pissed off by it. People kind of lost their shit. So I don't think I'll be doing that again. But I am going to poorly read this card. So it's Quand le Chantevier l'Occident arrive sur le champ uh, du bata bata bataille? 
Is it Bataille? I think it's Bataille. Vu and then legit, this is so blurry I can't freaking read it. Something. Fair que votre total de... Just the word points, I guess. I don't know how to say that in French. Points. De vie de vienne. Endurance total des creed... Is that... I don't think they had accent marks. Is this French? Is this... I can't read the bottom. Oh, that would be funny if it wasn't. I can't imagine what else it would be. It's certainly not Portuguese. Anyway, creatures. Que vous control that a squiggle over the... I don't know what squiggles do. Somebody tell me what squiggles do. I don't know. Let's go with controlas. That's definitely not the American pronunciation, if that's what you were thinking. And uh, screw the bottom part. So, uh, this is a six-cost Loxodon. It's a rare, um, and it's an elephant cleric. Whenever Loxodon Lifesinger enters the battlefield, you may have your life total become equal to the total toughness among creatures you control. I was wondering if that's what it said while I was reading it, because that's what I got out of it. Um, and then if you pay six, Loxodon Lifesinger gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is your freaking life total. Holy crap. I'll be honest, it's a fairer card than that stupid lifelink flipper thing where it, it trades power with your life total permanently. That's a uh, Evra, by the way. I'm shocked people don't play that, but it's so dangerous. You could flip it, and then somebody will just bolt you to death. Oh, they sealed away your creature? Well, I guess you're stuck at three life. So, I mean, yeah, this shows up damn late. I think this is actually, believe it or not, an appropriate power level for a six-cost creature with a six-cost ability. And this doesn't have lifelink, but still, like, you swing once with this, you won. But this also doesn't have trample, so... You could just block it forever. I don't know if this is honestly quite as good as people think it is, but that ETB effect, holy crap. I mean, if you drop this in on top of a swarm of creatures, you could go from five life to like 40. Probably realistically closer to 15, but you know, and this is one of those, I'm already winning win more cards, which you guys know it's, it's like the fool's gold of cool abilities on magic cards. If you had 40 total toughness between all the creatures in the battlefield, one, why haven't you won yet? And two, you're probably about to win. Why do you need to reset your life total to 40? And then on the flip side, if you're losing the game, this does next to nothing for you to turn the game around. Oh, I mean, it is a 4-6 for six, 6 with an amazing ability, so I wouldn't completely write it off. It's just that top ability isn't as good as it looks on the surface. Now, that said, it does say May, so you don't have to do it, which is very good. So next up, we got Dragon Mage. Shout out to everybody who says Dragon. Gee, I didn't know everybody who's from the coast of the United States is British. Anyway, this is a 7 cost 5-5 five, five flyer, and whatever it deals combat damage to a player, each player discards their hand, then draws 7 cards. They probably should have named this the epitome of stupidity, because that's what it is. What if you just want to hit them for 5 and don't want to give them 7 cards? You can't. What if you need to redraw your hand because it's empty, but you can't hit them because there's something bigger in the way? You can't. Not only do those two things, like the creature and that effect, have nothing to do with each other, but you have zero control over them. This card is utterly stupid. So next up, we got some very old school looking artwork on Goblin Ringleader. It's a 2-2 two -two for 4 with haste. Oh boy, we just needed more goblins because that archetype ain't toxic enough already. And uh, when it enters the battlefield, reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all goblin cards revealed this way into your hand. Thank God it's not onto the battlefield. And the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So you really could whiff with this. I mean, you could have one or two of them be land pretty reasonably. If the other two are like ambushed instants, boy, you got a whole lot of nothing out of this. So it's unreliable, unpredictable, but it's still kind of nice. But it, it better be because you're spending four mana on a 2-2 in a speed red damage deck. So in other words, no, you're not, because you're probably not playing this card. I just, I feel like it's not good enough. Now that said, this does play around control pretty damn well. Is somebody really going to wipe the board, like, in the middle of the game, I guess you could say, you know, turn six, seven, eight, when you just drew maybe two, three, or four more goblins? I mean, they might not have a choice. So I don't know, somebody might play them, but it doesn't strike me as great. And uh, the last card we got is a big smelly ape. I guess Grun the Lonely King won't be so lonely because we've got Silverback Shaman. Bros, if, if he's going to be a shaman, if you're going to try to convince me that that right there in the artwork is a shaman, yet bare minimum got to put him in a silly hat. Bare minimum. If not giving him like a scepter and just wearing a full African dashiki. Anyway, it's a 5-4 for 5 with Trample, which is not bad. I mean, 4 is probably not going to live, but whatever. We don't have that many Trample cards in uh, Standard right now, actually, for green. Uh, and then when it dies, draw a card, which is good, because it will, because it has 4 toughness. So, I mean, this would work great with uh, the guy that reduces the cost of uh, expensive creatures by 2. 
but then that card grants trample. So I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a common, you can tell. So finally, that is it for today's spoilers. Some very interesting ones with very interesting repercussions and uh, references to older cards and everything. So uh, if you liked it, leave a big old like. If you didn't, uh, piss off. Clearly you're the one with the problem. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.